Welcome back to Unity. Welcome back to Unity. <laughs> it's, it's, we've had some week, I'll tell you. It, it, last Sunday, about, no, we were getting ready. At 1 o'clock last Sunday, David and the cast of Listen to My Heart, his Tampa cast, got up and performed in the main Opal Theater uh, on the Oasis of the Sea and had 200 people crying. I mean, it was even me. I was well up sitting in the front row. Some of the cast of Hairspray came out to hear it, and they were. So I, I, I had that bunch of napkins in my pocket. I passed them down. They got standing. He got. They got standing ovations for every single song. It, it, it's one of those magic times. It's. It's not that David is. what well, he is pretty amazing. But, and that was his song, by the way. David wrote that song. That's a true story. He wrote for a friend of his. Uh, a few years back, and uh, it's her father had told her, you've got to write your, play your own music. And watching David's show last week, and I don't know how many people went to see David's nightclub back at Studio 54 this past winter. And I went on my sabbatical, I was in for one weekend to do a couple of weddings, and it happened to also be the weekend that he was doing his opening night. And the reaction from that crowd I was, I, when I, I was on my way to the airport and I called him and I said, I hope you can take in what the emotions of that crowd that night. I was on over 100 people and because I was having a hard time taking it in. And, it, and I'm not here to glorify David. The reason I bring him up is because he is willing to show his talent to those who will listen. Some of us try to hide under a bushel on talent for fear that it's not good enough. And uh, what's the best term to use? That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> and it's foolish. And it's unnecessary. I watched people get up here. We got here about 8 o'clock last night. We got off, the, got off the plane, driver picked us up, took us home, and we raced over here so we could see as much of the evening as, as possible. And I watched the talent on, on this, this lovely platform. <laughs> and I watched things that blew, that I didn't know were possible. You know, I, I have never seen anyone play the cup <laughs> and the stool and sing at the same time. I watched you play to the accompaniment of your iPad <laughs> and sing. And I thought, the things that can be done in this day and age. Today's talk is called The Destiny of the Mind. We're in a three-week series within the Search for God book. Uh, we have one left over there. I really recommend this book, and if it goes, I'll order some more. I, uh, there's Destiny of the Mind this week. Next week is Destiny of the Body, and the third week is Destiny of the Soul. But mind is how we are all connected. Divine mind. Uh, that's, that's what really we are. That's the, the true essence of our abilities is mind, is, is mind, mind. That's what God, God is mind. We have many words for God and not one of them say it's a person. Not one of it say it is a thinker. Not one of them say it is someone who could change his or her mind. You know, there's capital M mind and then there's little mind. They, they both create. That's how we create our lives with our mind. We create our experiences with our mind. What Kenneth just sang about is a, a, the, the advice of the Father is have an active prayer life. That's really, to me, what I hear in that song. When you've got to make your own music, what it means is don't do it my way. I mean, as, as the earthly parent, Connect with spirit. Connect with the truth of your being. And make your music. Connect with the truth of who and what you are. And have your voice. Be yourself. Often I, I have had, I have over the years, I've told people who have gotten on a, on a stage, be it, be it a spiritual platform or on a stage, and I've said, here's the deal. Put self-consciousness aside and become God-conscious. And I can always spot the difference. 
when somebody walks up here or they walk up on any stage. I always know whether they are self-conscious today or God-conscious. It, it, it shows so quickly. When one is God-conscious, one is authentic. That's what we're, And when I do the stand-up comedy workshop, that's what we're going to work on, is authenticity on the stage. So that you would never need to be self-conscious. It would not have to be a concern about what they think of you. You are connecting with spirit. That's why people love Dave, what David does. You have to understand that when David first walked into a Unity Church back in 2002, he came there to play for Norm Lewis at Unity in the City. And uh, if you don't know Norm Lewis, he's a wonderful Broadway, Broadway entertainer. He just started Porgy and Bess on Broadway and stuff. But he, uh, he, he has sung here, but he was invited to be the soloist, and he asked David, if, if for their arrangement, David said, well, I've heard about Unity. How about if I come and play it for you? And it, and it was the one Sunday I wasn't there. I was there almost every single Sunday, and I wasn't there that week, but I, I used to copy the tapes, and so I heard, David Friedman was here, how odd. And, uh, but the next week he walks in, and, but he walked in and he got applause just because it, so many people knew his music. Uh, because they have been doing it, these he, he writes songs that don't they, we don't have to change the lyrics to make them politically correct <laughs> for you know, for New Thought churches, New Thought services, and uh, the rest of the story is the next week he came back and he sat straight across from me and waved to me, and uh, they asked him to be do the music at their summer retreat over July fourth, and this coming July fourth, he and I will be together eleven years. <laughs> uh, because, and here's where new thought happened, because when I heard David was playing at the Unity Retreat, I said, I'm coming home with a David Friedman. <laughs> and I did. I knew. There are certain things you know in life. One, I knew when the, this church called the office in the city and said, we're looking for a licensed Unity teacher for our minister. And I thought, I have a job. And this October will be nine years that I've been here. You know, it's there are certain things you know if you pay attention, and that's what the destiny of your mind is you cannot lose. It says here in this chapter in the introduction part, truth may be proved only by results. Otherwise it's a theory of truth. See, we are spiritual scientists, and we must prove the principles true. That is the foundation of unity, of the unity movement. In Unity Movement was a prayer ministry when it started around the kitchen table. When it went past Myrtle Fillmore and her friends started joining in, it was at their kitchen table, they got together and they prayed together. But it wasn't prayer, oh please God. It was pr a prayer of divine mind. It was a prayer of the, of the awareness of what is possible. Of the full divine potential within the human experience, within the spiritual experience. You see, none of us are stuck with, oh, this happened to me. Nor are we stuck with, I hope this happens to me. So you've got to make your own music. You've got to connect with spirit so that you may know what is possible. That you may know, capital N, <laughs> Capital K N O W. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so truth may be proved only by results. If we would be led by the spirit that leads into all truth, we may expect to have many opportunities for proof in our own life. A life of true humility is the great expectation of God's best. And so we may expect, as spiritual scientists, as the inheritors of the kingdom, we may expect God's best. And so trust me now that whatever is taking place is God's best as you are willing to experience it. Whatever is taking place, give thanks for. No matter what it looks like, no matter what you think of it, give thanks now. That's one thing, it's the law of non-resistance. But give thanks for whatever is laid out in front of you, however you are perceiving it. 
Start with, thank you, God. I don't know what I'm giving thanks for, but thank you, God. Gratitude will heal a lot of conditions. It will heal all conditions, actually. So you start with gratitude, because that's a form of love. Good parenting. Remember that? Let's all make a whole connection here. Good parenting is love. Thank you, God. He is love. And I'm talking for anything and everything. I'm not telling you to throw confetti. I'm talking about, it's not New Year's Eve, every situation. I'm saying, you give thanks now, because you want to see this correctly. You want your mind active and at work, awaking all of the intelligence in your very being, so that you can make a decision based in truth rather than fear. Truth rather than doubt, which is the same as fear. Truth, it's all... It's either, it's either love or fear. <laughs> uh, so it says here, the first lesson, Destiny of the Mind, deals with mind and its relation to the varied attributes of the mental, physical, and spiritual bodies. Mind is of God. Destiny, destiny is a law. It's an immutable law. The mind God gave to us a soul, a portion of God's self, and when we fell away, God furnished a channel, a way, an access to the throne of grace, mercy, and truth through the Son. Now, the Son is not Jesus the man. The Son is the Christ. The Son is the awakened man. That's what the Son is. Jesus is considered to be one of the ones who, who did the awakening, who did the aligning of the divine mind faculties. We're not saying Jesus is the only one, but he's the main one. He's the one we know in Christianity. He's the most famous. But I can't believe he'd be the only one. It's just, that's the book we, we've read about, most of us, uh, here. And so, But the Son is the awakened man. Uh, uh, there's a biblical quote, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what that means is, in, in metaphysics, that... So Jesus Christ it, it represents the awakened man. And the awakened man was the same yesterday. The awakened man is the same today as yesterday. And the awakened man will be the same tomorrow. It is our goal, as it were, to awaken. But that's not to, we're not looking for that sometime in the future, although some of us are putting it off. Some of us have a few other things to do before we awaken. Would you agree? <laughs> I have a few things to say before I awaken. I have some cash to get a hold of before I awaken. I have some property I want to buy before I awaken. I want to fix my past before I awaken. And then I'll get around to awakening. So, you know, I'm going to get old. I'll do it then when there's nothing else to do. Because we misunderstand the point of awakening. What awakening is, is to the moment. And it's not to the future, it's to right now. It's not a goal for, for, for them, it's a goal for now. To awaken to the moment. To see everything exactly as it is. And I promise, I absolutely promise, and I'm promising this to myself too because I'm still resisting a little bit, is, to, is that there is no sacrifice. There is nothing of value that we will lose by awakening to right now, to the moment. We'll know what to do with everything in the awakening to the moment. The destiny of the mind is not a destiny for the future. It is a destiny for right now. The destiny of right now Reyesa today asks you to choose one thing that you would consider your inheritance for today. One thing. The whole kingdom is available as our inheritance. But let's face it, if, you're, if, you're, if your aunt died and left you a treasure chest filled with jewels, you'd be hard-pressed to wear all of them, at least if it's a big chest. <laughs> I'm not talking about a tiny jewelry box. We're talking about, you know, a pirate's chest. You'd be hard-pressed to wear all of them. And if it was filled with a gazillion dollars, you'd be hard-pressed to spend all of it today. But you'd spend some of it today. You'd wear some of your jewels today. You'd do, if, you were, 
blessed with five properties and an inheritance, you couldn't live in all of the houses today if they're spread out over states. <laughs> uh, it's one neighborhood, maybe. But you couldn't sleep in all the beds tonight. And that's my point. What, what, what part of your inheritance would you consider experiencing today? What part of your inheritance would you give yourself today? You see, the inheritance was already given by God. So what part of it would you give yourself today? Last week, I gave myself uh, the Unity Conference, which did happen to be on a cruise ship. How cool. I did a good job. Uh, but it was the International Unity Conference this year. It's in my contract. I go to the conference. It's on the Oasis of the Seas, which I do not recommend if you're going on a cruise. It's not, it's not the best boat. It's a nice clean one, but it's not the best boat. Uh, it's not the best food. It's, 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 I wouldn't call it your divine inheritance, even though I had a, a lot of divine experiences. We had great experiences this week because I wasn't going to let lousy food get in the way of great experiences. We had great experiences with other Unity ministers and, and what we call lay people. And uh, we had great experiences with the cast from some of the shows. Who remembers Too Close for Comfort? TV show. Jim J. Bullock was the, starring in Hairspray. We became his best friend this week. We had the best time with him. And we went up to he and the woman that plays Tracy in Hairspray. They did a cabaret act. They do David's music in it. By coincidence. I mean, it, it was so funny that we, we had great experiences this week while eating mediocre to not so good food. I only gained four pounds instead of, instead of a lot. <laughs> yeah. And it's the destiny of the mind tells us that our good is here now. The good isn't when we get on the boat and the good isn't when we get off the boat. The good is now. On my way to the boat on my way through the boat, which is almost a mile long, I think, or a fifth of a mile long, isn't it? A fifth of a mile long, and it's probably why I didn't gain so much, a lot of walking. And, uh, you know, my good is here now while I'm having this conversation with you, while I'm having this conversation with you, while, while this one Kenneth is singing a tune, while the joyful noise is doing what they're doing. My good is here while I'm, somebody's demanding an apology. You know, my good is here now. Would you consider awakening to the moment? and making your own music because your own music is coming from God rather than your past. Would you consider that? Making your own music because your own music is coming right now from God rather than from your past. If that is the case, then I say congratulations to you. You are in the graduating class of good parenting. Congratulations.